So in this lesson we're going to look at Korean War. Now clearly the Korean War was a tragedy for the Korean people themselves, but one of the questions we'll be asking as we go through this brief look at the Korean War was how successful was the USA in the Korean War, especially in the big question of this unit, how successful were US attempts at containment. So a divided land. The Japanese had effectively controlled the Korean Peninsula from 1905 up to the defeat of Imperial Japan at the end of the Second World War in 1945. And at the end of the war, Russian military forces were in the north of the country, if you look at the map north of the 38th parallel, and US military forces were in the south. And at the Yalta Conference, the country was divided along the 38th parallel in terms of these military occupations. Well, this division became more formalised when in 1948 separate governments were set up. In the north of the country, Kim Il-sung took power in Communist North Korea and Syngman Rhee won some disputed elections in the south of the country. Both Kim Il-sung and Syngman Rhee were nationalists, however, and both advocated reunification of the Korean Peninsula. So, prelude to invasion, the lead-up to the invasion. Syngman Rhee was very anti-communist, and in that respect, he was popular with the US. But in another way, he was not so popular. His government was very authoritarian, corrupt, and with a major segment of the South Korean population was not particularly popular. They did badly in the 1949 elections and many South Koreans actually voted for unification with the Communist North. That may be hard to believe now when you have the clear differences in wealth and quality of living between South Korea and the, and the North Korea of today, which is obviously in incredible depths of poverty and suffering. However, back in 1949, this is before the South Korean economic miracle, which doesn't really gather steam until the 1960s. So at this stage, both the North and the South are mired in poverty and really rather undeveloped. So the US forces actually withdrew in 1949. Syngman Rhee had actually been asking the US to supply the South Korean army with more advanced weapons technology, with artillery and tanks and so on, but they had refused worried that Syngman Rhee might actually launch an invasion of the North uh, and thereby start a war in which they would have to get involved so recently after the end of the Second World War. So the US forces withdrew in 1949. However, the refusal of the US to supply the South Korean army with uh, military equipment meant that the North had a military advantage. And in June of 1950, North Korean troops invaded the South with the objective of reuniting the Korean Peninsula by military force. Now, Truman at this stage believed that there was Russian support. At that stage, the US administration believed that anything undertaken by any communist government was centrally directed by Moscow. And so he believed it. this was a test of containment. The US was furthermore worried as China had been united under the communists under Mao Zedong in 1949. Furthermore, the USSR had got the atomic bomb in September of 1949. Very worrying developments for the US. They were worried about communist world domination, about the spread of communism. And it did seem that the North's invasion of the South was a, a dangerous spread of communism, endangering also possibly uh, America's sort of what they viewed as a capitalist outpost in East Asia, endangering Japan. So General MacArthur was sent out. Let's have a look here at the UN Security Council. So the Truman had asked the UN Security Council for backing. Now note here the orange arrow indicating a missing member of the Security Council. Well, that missing member was the USSR, and had there been a vote with the USSR present in the UN Security Council, the USSR would probably have vetoed any UN expeditionary force 
to aid the South Koreans to fight against the North. However, the USSR was not there. The USSR was boycotting, that means it was protesting by, by not attending the UN over the China issue. Uh, Amer the UN at this stage uh, still recognised the Kuomintang, which had fled to Taiwan. They did not recognise Mao Zedong and the communists as the legitimate government of China. And as fellow communists, the USSR was boycotting, was protesting by not attending the UN, but consequently didn't use its veto over this issue. So under UN soldiers from the USA, mainly USA, about 88%, uh, plus other troops from Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and other countries, a UN expeditionary force was mounted. Well, initially, the North Korean attack was successful. They conquered all of the peninsula except the area around Pusan. In July, US forces had landed at Pusan, but they had been pushed back to the area just around Pusan. In September, however, utilising their advantage in, uh, in, the, in the Navy, the US launched a breakout to get combined with an amphibious assault at the port of Incheon, hoping to break North Korean supply lines. Well, this was quite successful, in fact, it was very successful, and by October of 1950, US, South Korean and the UN forces had reached the 38th parallel. So here's the decision now. What to do? To, to push on and invade North Korea? This would have the possible advantage of rolling back communism, not just containing or stopping the spread of communism, but actually rolling back communism. Negative as a possible risk of war over China. MacArthur felt this risk was very small, assured Truman that the risk of Chinese intervention was small, and advocated pushing on. And Truman effectively authorised this. So US forces then began to, in, they went over the 38th parallel and pushed up to the Yalu River with the objective of freeing the communist state of North Korea as they saw it. Okay, you can see there. Uh, UN and South Korean forces pushing up right to the Yalu River, right to the border with China. Chinese intervention. Um, basically, it was felt, certainly this was MacArthur's position, uh, but and many in the US minimised the danger of Chinese or Soviet intervention if the North Korean communists were pushed back to the border. Negligible, not a, not a big risk, not important, they felt. You know, the, the Chinese had only recently accomplished the takeover, the Chinese communists rather, had only recently accomplished the takeover of China. And they felt that the, the US advantage in, in air support and, and naval support meant the Chinese would not risk war. So the US didn't think China would risk war. In October, however, the Chinese did warn, you know, do not send your troops, don't approach the border. Um... MacArthur ignored these warnings. Truman was started, was was somewhat worried about this. He had, he had advised caution to MacArthur. Uh, MacArthur basically ignored the warnings and pushed his troops right up to the Yalu River. So the Chinese did intervene in October. Chinese troops attacked South Korean and US troops. And the, the sheer overwhelming numbers of the Chinese forces uh, caused the Allies to retreat. Britain and France at this stage now, in the, in the UN and through private channels, are advising Truman to begin negotiations with China. MacArthur, however, has a different strategy. He calls for an attack on China itself. The Chinese halted the US advance and MacArthur was forced to retreat back over the border. And in January of 51, the North Koreans again retook Seoul from the South Korean and American forces. So what does MacArthur now advise Truman to do? He says consider all methods to defeat China, including the use of atomic bombs. He hoped that by dropping atomic weapons he create a radioactive fallout zone and this would basically make it impossible for the Chinese to supply the North Koreans. He advocated further an invasion of China to cut off supplies to communist forces in Korea and ultimately the war should not only recapture North Korea but defeat communism in China itself. So he advocates, he advises, he wants to increase the scope of the war not only to 
retake South Korea, not even not only to retake North Korea and unify the peninsula, but furthermore, an actual defeat of communism in China itself. So the British and the French at this stage, though, are again, you know, they're, they're advocating negotiation with the Chinese. And there is something that Truman has to consider here, which is that the Soviets have developed nuclear weapons in 1949, that both the Soviets and the Chinese are communist, and any use of nuclear weapons could possibly meet with a nuclear response. So MacArthur chooses not to go, sorry, not MacArthur, Truman chooses not to go with MacArthur's uh, highly aggressive strategy of using nuclear weapons and attacking China itself. The war does continue, however. March of 51, the communists are pushed back to the 38th parallel in a counter-attack, a very bloody series of battles. MacArthur and Truman do continue to disagree. Truman now is opening negotiations with China. The war is continuing, but peace talks are underway with China as one of the significant allies of the North Koreans, contributing a lot of troops and material. Uh, MacArthur, though, he, he criticises Truman in public. Basically, he says that we should be reconquering Korea and defeating the Chinese. This is a, a direct challenge to Truman's authority. And in April, MacArthur was sacked from being leader of the UN forces in South Korea. So what followed now was a period of bloody stalemate. In summer of 1951, in April and May, in, in a massive Chinese assault, very reminiscent of the battles of World War I, of infantry assaults on trench positions. Over 200,000 are killed. In July of 51, peace talks were getting nowhere. There were disputes over the border. Where should the border lie? Disputes about prisoner exchange. For example, many North Korean prisoners in the South refused to be sent back to the North. Uh, this obviously wasn't accepted by the North, so there was a big dispute about prisoner exchange. And in 51-52, as I've said already, kind of similar to World War I, brutal artillery bombard bombardments followed by bloody infantry assaults, uh, which really didn't achieve much of a movement of the front line. In January of 53, a new president came to power, President Eisenhower in the United States. And with the help of um, actually an Indian proposal regarding prisoner exchange and so on, finally an armistice, a ceasefire, was agreed in July of 1953. Okay, so make up your mind. What do you think? Was the Korean War an instance of success of the US policy of containment?